All right, so we are totally living in a Glenn Powell world with his brand new movie, Twisters, because if you can feel it, you absolutely need to chase it all the way to the theaters this weekend to see this near-perfect summer blockbuster. What's going on, buddy? Welcome back to a brand new movie review. Today, we're going to be discussing Twisters. I got this dope-ass windbreaker. Just got to shout this out. I didn't know how comfortable this was going to be. Cannot wait for the winter now. But with that said, I have been really looking forward to this, mostly for a couple different reasons. You got Daisy Edgar Jones, you got Anthony Ramos, and you specifically have Glenn Powell. But it's this movie is made from the director of Minari. That is Lee Isaac Chung. I got to see that movie at the world premiere back in like 2020 during Sunday. Dance. It was an Academy Award nominated movie, and I think it even won a couple nominations, specifically for Best Supporting Actress. And that movie just like took my breath away with how poetic and perfect it was with like the Midwestern American lifestyle and showing a father's love for his family and specifically his dedication to them and that family. But it captured such a nuance that I didn't know that I could feel in a film like that. And I was very excited to see what he can bring Twisters. But I got even more excited for this movie when I finally got to see the original Twister, which I had never seen, and my wife always hounded me for it, and we ended up watching it just a couple days before we went and saw this movie tonight, and I I loved this film. I thought it was such a perfect, again, near-perfect summer blockbuster, if not perfect. Like, in terms of what you go to the movies for during the summer, it has every ounce of what you want. And as someone who just saw the first one for the first time and loved it, I think it's just on par with that original. As for my wife's opinion, someone who has grown up with Twisters, who has literally gone back and rewatched it multiple times, she, just so you guys know, gave the score of an 8.5 out of 10, around a B, a B plus for this movie. We're going to find out my score in just a little bit. But if you don't know what Twisters is about, well, it's about a retired tornado chaser and meteorologist who is persuaded to return to Oklahoma to work with a new team and new technologies. Now, just kind of before we get any deeper into this, please leave your thoughts down below. Are you a fan of the original? Are you excited for this one? Have you seen it already? Let me know down below. Hit that like and subscribe button, and let's start talking about this movie. So starting out with my pros, number one thing I want to talk about is, of course, the performances. Flat out, Glenn Powell can do no wrong. This guy can literally do anything and everything, and I think he makes every movie better for that. Even if the movie's just fine, like Anyone But You, I, I thought was just an overall fine romantic comedy. He made that movie exactly what it was, and I think in here it is almost the exact same time frame and point of view of what he is doing, and I thought he did a phenomenal job in this film. Like He is so charismatic and so fun, I just could not stop watching the screen every single time he came on there. I mean, I mean, neither could my wife, who went, oh, lordy, when he had a white T-shirt going through the rain. Anything goes for Daisy Edgar Jones, who I really like in Crawdads. I think she's a phenomenal actress, but I've been waiting kind of for that role to kind of show me what else she can do. And to see her highlight a summer blockbuster, I think, was the film I needed to see for her performance. And... She is the one with the main meat of the story with the emotional avenue. And just like within the original, there's a lot of callbacks and certain nuances to certain things from the original film. It's not a direct sequel, nor is it a direct continuation. It very much is its own thing, and it's like the next generation of Tornado Chasers. But what I loved about that first film is it kicks off and starts what makes this character who they are. And in that first film, you see what affected our main character from when they were a kid. And in here, you see what affected this main character, someone who loves the chase and how that affected her in the start. What that element of her life really adds to her, I think added such a bigger nuance to her character as well. And again, makes it for a character to easily want to cheer for and be for that entire way through. And I thought she was just great. Anthony Ramos is just phenomenal as well. I really like him too, but I think these two were truly the big stars of this film. So Glenn Powell's whole entire crew in here is really fun. And I think some of them are just as memorable as the original crew from the first Twister. It's actually another thing that I thought was actually pretty clever in this film that they did is in the original film, you know, 
the scientists were the main ones that you followed, and they had this kooky crew with it all, but the more serious, hardcore scientists, they were the ones that was kind of the enemies of this all and kind of frowned and looked down upon them, where in this one's kind of a flip-flop, you know, the Daisy Edgar Jones's whole crew with Anthony Ramos is the more serious scientific ones that kind of look down on these YouTubers who are chasing tornadoes. And it's really cool to see how you can't judge a book by its cover and how this other group is actually doing quite a lot of things. And I like to see the development of that. And again, I think a lot of that goes down to the directing of this and with from Lee Isaac Chung, who I think, again, does a phenomenal job doing multiple different layers through here. One, giving us a really great story. Two, giving us fleshed out characters that while, again, you learn more and more about them, it's enough to make you root for them. And, of course, three, just the, the thrilling moments throughout it. But I do feel that there is a deeper thematical avenue into what Lee Isaac Chung was able to do, and that was creating the culture of Oklahoma and making you feel like you are there in Oklahoma. And just like the original Twister, I think they did a great job there, but that sensation was needed. And from what I could also tell was that this movie was shot on film, which is a very particular thing to shoot with, specifically for a blockbuster. It's a lot harder to shoot on film for films like this length, and the fact that they were able to, I think, goes as far to show how much he wanted to pay respect to the original Twister. Of course, that era of blockbuster filmmaking. And I think what Chung's direction and his eye was for was great for that. I think the reason that I really dug a lot of those moments in particular was because it never feels too bright or too vibrant. In fact, I think a lot of this film feels a little bit grittier. It feels like the original one in the same tone and style, and specifically the way that, again, it was shot. Some of the cinematography shots in here are just grand. There's one that deals with a the movie theater, and that's all I will say, that my jaw nearly hit the floor when I saw that sequence. Honestly, to add on top of that, I think one of the things that I just want to mention is that for me personally, I thought the visual effects in here were pretty much good for the overall style of the film. We'll talk a little bit more about that in my cons when I talk about some of the smaller stuff in here, but I thought that was very well done. So the fact that they have like a whole country soundtrack to this movie, just a cherry on top for the entire movie. I think, again, this just feels like a summer blockbuster that would have came out around the 90s, right after the original one. And I'm so happy we have a movie like this to now experience in 2024. And I think it's one that's going to make people wish we had more films like this. And I've seen a lot of comparisons to Top Gun Maverick. And in some way, shape, and form, yeah, I can completely see that because it's just films like this we just don't get made enough nowadays let's talk about some of my issues now again a perfect blockbuster doesn't mean that this is a perfect movie at least in my eyes there are some things that i feel were a little bit could have been stronger and to just put one thing out there as well if you enjoy the original twister i imagine that you will at least like this movie if you have a hard love on for that original one maybe you might feel a little bit disappointed in certain departments my wife is a big category of that. She felt some of the visual effects in here were a little bit too digital and didn't look completely real. I kind of understood what she was saying, kind of didn't, but again, she loves that original one so much. As well as something that we both did agree on is that the film takes a little bit too long to really get off and going. Again, the opening scene, fantastic, but everything kind of building into the second act took way too long to get on board with me. And for me, I was kind of sitting there going, I don't, I don't get why people are like, so many people are enjoying this. Like it's, it's okay. It's good, but I don't, I don't get it. Once you hit the second act, it just takes off flying and same thing with the third. Last but not least, I think the movie is a tad bit predictable. That's it. That's, that's really it. But seriously enough, Twisters the movie is just as perfect as a summer blockbuster can get. It's two charismatic stars, intense and thrilling moments, gorgeous cinematography, and most of all, a story that emotionally resonated with so many. Lee Isaac Chung, you are the star of this show for me personally, but Powell and Jones, you just continue to show why you guys are the shining stars right now in Hollywood. So with all that said, I'm going to give Twisters an A-. minus. Thank you so much again, guys, for watching this. Make sure to hit that like, subscribe button, comment down below your guys' thoughts. We got a Deadpool and Wolverine review coming out next Tuesday and a ton of San Diego Comic-Con coverage coming over to this channel, coming over to the end of the Geek First podcast channel, and same thing on all of our audio feeds. Definitely go check those out. Make sure to subscribe. You're not going to want to miss out on that. But, of course, until next time, stay classy.